I'm Charlie. And I'm Marara. Charlie, Charlie. Yeah? I am so excited. What are you excited about? Uh, is it cool words out there or the big three? All of those, but I'm also excited about a trip. A trip? Marara, where are you going? Well, I'm going to visit some friends. Oh, uh, you know the directions to their house? Yes? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Uh, it's the second turning on the left, then the third turning on the right, okay. then... That's good, Marara. Or is it second right, then third left? Or is it third, third left? Or oh, what? <laughs> we will help you figure out the directions later because right now we have to go into the chill out zone and meet today's studio guests. Come on. Or is it second on the left? Hi, everyone. Hi. Why don't we say a big hello to everyone who's watching us at home? Hello! We are very glad to have you helping us with today's show. And we hope that you have your pen and paper ready to write down this week's buzzwords. Who can tell us what the buzzwords are all about? They're all about directions. Good job, Marara. Now, what are the buzzwords? North. West. East. South. Well done. Now, Listen out for these buzzwords in the rest of the episode and in the next program. It's time for Junction Teens. I can't believe I'm saying it. No, it's silly. What? I'm missing Brian. It's so quiet without him. Are you crazy? I'm enjoying the peace. James, Bakar is right. Bran should be here. But it's not like we can rescue him. You're wrong. That's exactly what we should do. Everything has to be done commando style. We go in, we get him out. And you think his grandmother will let us do that right under her nose? We have to do something, even though the grandmother is very tough. Why? If the grandmother has grounded him, let him deal with it. I wanted to try out my new compass, but it does not feel right without him. So how exactly does this commando thing work? Easy. I lead everything. the commando thing won't work. The only option is to be honest with his grandmother. It won't work. She'll listen to us. We can make her listen. Let's just go on with our lives. We should at least try. Why? You're saying that because you're only scared of trying and failing. No, I'm not. If I wanted to, I would have saved him. It's just that I don't want to. Then prove it. Okay, okay. Let's go. Well, let's go. You are coming to talk about Brian, he's grounded and not changing that. Um, the thing is, Mrs. Baraka. Yes, and I haven't got all day. Wondering if Brian could come and work on a social studies assignment with us. I've got a compass. Social studies? You know, the cardinal points of a compass. North, south, east, west. Yes, yes, yes. I'm very good on directions. So, can Brian join us? No. If Brian needs any help, I'll help him. Goodbye. You go. On our compass, what is directly opposite northeast? Southwest. So, where is Brian? We tried. Didn't we? Yes, but Bernadette is really tough. We couldn't persuade her. 
I thought you said you could free Bran if you wanted. Whatever. Would like to see you try. Maybe I will. Why not? I'm sure we'll do better than the boys. You don't need to waste your time. I don't think you'll even get anywhere close to Brian. Don't worry. I know you can do worse than you did. Let's go. I have to see this. Yeah, I need a bit of space. Why? Why can't we see what you're up to? Because you already tried once, and if Bernadette sees you here, she'll only get suspicious. Yeah. Whatever I tried, it's not going to work. Wait and see. You guys just go straight on, and we'll come and find you when we're done. Yeah. Yes, girls. How can I help you? Hello, Mrs. Baraka. We know Brian is grounded, but we're having some trouble with math and we're hoping he could help us. Show me. I used to be the best math student during my younger days. Uh, 28, 20 something. This is not mathematics. Brian! Uh, yes? Come go help your friends to do the numbers. And be fast because I'm waiting for you here. Wow, how did you manage that? We used our heads. <laughs> James, what do you think about that? Thanks, guys. Now that I'm free, what are you going to do? I can't be gone for long. I wanted to try out my new compass, so let's explore the forest. We've been going south for a long time without seeing something interesting. Let's go west now. I'd rather we keep moving the same direction so it will be easier to get home. Nita is right. I can't risk getting late. And I don't want to be grounded for even longer. Okay, we keep going west. Imagine if Bernadette found out what we're doing. We'll be in so much trouble. I feel so bad about lying. Don't be. It's nice to be out. Even though it's only for an afternoon. And furthermore, if we come back on time, Bernadette will never know. Yeah, by the way, I still don't know what happened to James and Babu. Ah, they are fine. I'm sure they'll catch up. They're probably just bitter because they're able to free Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Going south, if you go east and turn left, perhaps we'll intercept them and give them the fright of their lives. I'm the lion. I'll be the night runner. They'll hate the forest forever. Hold on. What's this? A witch doctor? What a waste of money. Wait a minute. Perhaps this witch doctor can leave Brian's grounding for good. We'll show the girls. Boys, I thought Brian was helping you with your homework. Where is he? We're going to get a study book. Don't keep your friends waiting. So hurry up and tell Brian I'm waiting for him here. That was so close. Very close. Now which direction do we take? That way. <laughs> what do we do? I didn't even like this idea of yours coming into the forest. They've gone quiet. I want to go home. We have to make sure they are gone. <laughs> I don't like your games. Even boys are shrieking <laughs> like girls. <laughs> Grow up, you two. Ah, it was James's idea. And I'm glad it was my idea because he found something that will help Brian. What? We found a flare that says there's a witch doctor nearby. Since Brian is grounded, we can take him for cleansing. Perhaps things will be better. <laughs> James, witch doctors don't work. <laughs> Who told you? Even being grounded is not fun. Brian, we should go. Uh, Brian, do you really think this witch doctor is going to work?
Just let me go and see what they're talking about. Ah, uh, you guys are wasting time. Everyone knows which doctors are con me. Exactly. Nita, stop talking nonsense. You remember Uncle Karaoke who had a bad back? And then Auntie Wanjiru took him to that man. His back was straight. It was magic. That was a doctor who gave him painkillers. <laughs> that is so not true, Nita. Look, guys. We have to make a decision and we don't have much time. Yeah. I'm going. So am I. Bakari, are you coming? I mean, we'd rather fail having tried than fail having never tried. Girls, are you man enough? Do you mean are we foolish enough? Exactly. We are going back to the hideout. Yeah. Let's go, boys. Babu, aren't you coming? I'd better make sure the girls arrive safely, and I don't believe in witch doctors either. What? I tried to say something, but Bernadette interrupted. Okay. Come on, let's go. See you later. Thank you for walking us back, Babu. It was very kind of you. No problem. And I didn't want to see the witch doctor either. I can't believe they're being so foolish. I'm sure they'll all be fine. Uh, but the witch doctor won't do anything. They'll just come back broke and tired. And don't forget Bernadette. She's going to be so mad when she finds out. And Bran is going to be in so much trouble. Don't you mean... You are going to be in so much trouble. Remember, it's you that told Bernadette that Brian needed to work on his math. I hope they come back soon. Yes, this is Brian and James are talking about. Trouble seems to follow them like a bad smell. We are doomed. Don't worry, Bakar is with them. I'm sure they'll all be fine. According to the flyer, the place is near. We have walked a few meters east and are headed south. It can't be far, we've walked like forever. Don't tell me you're scared, Bran. No, don't be stupid. But remember, my grandmother is still waiting for me. Ah, as I told you, once you see the witch doctor, all your problems will be solved. And after that, remember who came up with the plan, eh? Really? That is if we ever find the place. Are we close, Bakari? Um, it should be... here. Oh, oh, maybe we made a mistake. We should have turned left instead of right back there. What? I'm going to be in so much trouble. Don't worry, Brian. Everything will be fine. Isn't it, Bakari? Yes, of course, of course. Even if I am not able to find the witch doctor, at least I can find our way back home. Maybe, I think. Maybe? Are we ever going to leave this place? <laughs> Can you stop pissing up and down? You're making me feel nervous. I can't help it. They should be back by now. It's getting late. Where are they? What if something happened to them? They'll be fine. What if the witch doctor did something bad to them? <laughs> Maybe he made them invisible. Brian, James, Bakari. Are you there? No, I can't see them. Bob, <laughs> can you be serious? I hope James is okay. Relax. They'll be fine. Trust me. Oh, no. Whoever wrote these directions doesn't know anything about directions. Look, we've walked 200 meters to the north. We've turned left, as he said, at a point where we would meet a path. And a well as well. But there's no well here. I think Brian will just have to call somebody to rescue us with his phone. Can't you see I'm looking for network? There's no network. Something moved in the bush. We really shouldn't have come here. Wow, that was an interesting episode. Oh yes, what a cliffhanger. What buzzwords did you hear? West, South, East, North. Oh yes, and I want to know what happens. Please, can we watch the second part? Oh, I'm so sorry, Mara. You just have to wait till next week. Oh, please. I don't think I can wait. I'm going to worry a lot for the whole week. Ah, Marara, it'll be fine. Oh, wait a minute. I know what that means. Yeah, it's time for us to join Teacher Panda on Cool Words. Cool Words. Cool, cool Words. Hello, everyone. 
Hello, Hello teacher Brenda. Welcome to our lesson today. Now on the tables here, our studio class have some word cards. Now for you at home, the words will appear on your screen. Now I'd like you all to look at the words and tell me the topic we might be studying today. Are you ready? Yes. Go. Look at the words. Well, time's up, everyone. Now, I hope you at home, the words have given you a clues to our topic of study. Now, let's hear some of your ideas. Oh, Teacher Pendo? Yes, Marara. Now, from the words route and map, mm -hmm. I think the topic is traveling. Uh -huh. You need to have a map or know the route to take when you travel. Well, that's a very good try, Marara, but it's not quite what I am looking for. Someone else? Yes, Miriam? I think our topic is about finding directions. Very good. That's exactly what our topic today is about. All the words you have here on the table and the ones you saw on your screen all have to do with direction. Now, do you know what a compass is used for? Oh, yeah. I, I, I think I do. Yes, Mara. It's an instrument used for finding direction. That's right. Now, I have a compass here with me, which I want to show you. Now, please pass it around to everyone so that everyone can have a look. Now, what do you notice about the compass points? Yes, Ezekiel? There are four points marked on it with letters N, S, W, E. Very good. Anything else you notice? Oh, yes, Teacher Pendo. Yes, Mara. Every time I move the compass, the points continue to face the same direction. Aha, uh -huh, that's a very good observation. Now that's the reason it is a reliable instrument for telling direction. The compass points are north, south, east, and west, as Ezekiel noted. Now, can you point to us uh, which direction the compass shows? Is he right? Yes! yes. Okay, great. Now, let's move on. Now, this is a map of Kenya. Now, a map is a plan or a drawing of a part of the earth which helps us identify locations and physical features of different places. Now, other words we can use when giving directions are signposts, junction, crossroads, and lane. Oh, you know, the other day, mm -hmm. my uncle got lost in the city but he was able to find his way by looking at signposts on the road. Aha! Uh -huh. Now signposts can help us to know where we are, especially around towns and cities. Now let's move on. Look at this list of words. Now in the first column, there is something unique about these words. Who can tell me what they notice? Yes, Musili? They all end with E-R. All the words here end with E-R. Now they are adverbs. Adverbs are words that you'd normally use with verbs and they provide more information about the activity taking place. Now let's look at the second column. What kind of words are these? Yes, Rashida? They are all verbs. They show some action taking place. Now, you are right, Rashida. Now, we are going to use our adverbs to give more detail about verbs. Now, I'd like you to choose words from the two columns with than to make comparisons like this. Musili jumped higher than Marara. Now, who would like to go fast with the sentences? Yes, Miriam? During the race, the standard six boys ran faster than standard seven boys. Very good. Someone else? Yes, Ezekiel? My sister was punished for, for arriving later than the set time. Mm -hmm. Very good. Someone else? Yes, Rashida? I was standing longer than my, than my friend waiting for the matata. Uh -huh. Very good. Someone else? Oh, did you yes, Pendo? Marara? The football coach asked the players to hit the ball harder than they had been doing before. Excellent. Can we have one more? Yes, Musili? I got a prize for walking faster than all the other competitors. Well done, all of you. Oh, Teacher Pendo? Yes, Marara? I think I like adverbs because I feel like they tell me more about what is happening. And I like to know as much information as possible. <laughs> That's good, Marara. Well done, all of you. Well, I'm afraid with that, we've come to the end of our lesson today. But we'll be back next week. Now, why don't you practice following directions at home? Right now, I hear Maspidi has somewhere interesting to take us. Let's go and join him. It's time for Out There.
I love aeroplanes. I like the way they can take you from one place to the other and in a short time. But one thing for sure is that I've always wondered how something so heavy can manage to fly. Maybe I should visit one of my friends in the aviation industry and get to talk to him. I used to have a friend here at uh, Fly 540. Come on, let's go and learn about aeroplanes. Come on, good people, come with me. Fly 540 is a low-cost airline based in Nairobi, Kenya that operates domestic and international passenger and freight services. Oh, I'm told that I have to wait here as my friend will be landing in a few minutes time. Hey, this is David. <laughs> oh, David. David is a pilot with Fly 540. It's been long since we last met, but he tells me that he can spare some time and take us through his line of duty today. David tells me that being a pilot is the best thing that has ever happened to him. Ever since he was young, he had always admired pilots and so he took a career in aviation. Being a pilot is one career that calls for a lot of discipline and concentration, even in the smallest details. There are several important safety steps that a pilot must take before every flight. Come on, good people, let's join David and learn while we have fun. David tells me that the airline pilots spend part of their workday before each flight getting the plane ready. This includes planning the flight and checking the plane to ensure that everything is working properly. This is what we call a hangar. Just like a car's garage, a hangar is a space set aside for aircrafts. When they are not flying, it's from here that they are serviced and looked into. pilot to be able to steer the plane to the right direction, the cardinal points of the compass always come in handy. Pilots choose the path, speed, and altitude of the flight based on the decisions agreed upon with the air traffic control and the weather expert after studying conditions of the projected path. But how can this huge and heavy machine get off the ground in the first place, let alone stay aloft for thousands of miles? David says that airplanes get their power from engines. Small planes generally use piston engines, which turn propellers that push aircraft through the air in the same way that the boat propellers push vessels through the water. But bigger planes use jet engines powered by burning fuel. These engines expel great amounts of air that thrust them forward and up. I'm told that for me to be able to understand this better, I will first need to know the different parts of an aeroplane. Aeroplanes are able to lift into the air and stay there because of the shape of their wings. An airplane wing is flat on the bottom and curved on the top. When a plane's engine pushes it forward, air divides to travel around its wings. The air that passes over the larger curved top moves faster than the air that passes under the flat bottom. The uneven air pressure then creates a force called lift which allows an aircraft to fly. And that's why in order to get enough lift to rise into the air on takeoff, an airplane has to travel along the ground fast at great speed. In other words, moving air is required to steer it whether it's flying north, south, east or west. Come on good people, let's get inside and learn more. This is the cockpit. This is the place where the controls are and where the pilot sits. The airline pilot or captain is assisted in his job by a crew consisting of a co-pilot 
a flight engineer and a flight attendant. I'm loving being David's co-pilot for today as there is so much to learn here. To control a plane, David tells me that a pilot uses several instruments. The pilot controls the engine power using the throttle. Pushing the throttle increases the power and pulling it decreases the power. A pilot uses a control wheel to raise and lower the elevators by moving it forward to backward. Oh, oh, there is definitely so much to learn about flying airplanes. But I have learned so much today. Let's take a flight and have fun. Bye! All the talk of travel makes me want to fly. Fly? Marara, but lions don't fly. Well, that's okay. I can be the first one. A flying lion. Rawr. Okay, why don't we talk about this a little later? Because right now it's time for you at home and our studio guests to get into a mathematical mood. Let's see how well you do and how many sums you can solve on the big three. With me, Marara, the flying lion. Rawr. to the big three. This is how it works. We have divided you into two teams to work three mental arithmetic questions. Now whichever team solves the three sums correctly gets to take these wonderful books back to their school courtesy of our friends, the Longhorn Publishers. And if we have a tie at the end, we are going to have a tiebreaker question. Now here is the sting. You will only hear the questions once. You have five seconds to answer the question and you will not See this question written down until the end of the game. Are the rules clear? Yes! It's a real test of your brain power and you at home can join us as well. Marara, are you going to keep the time for us? Yes, I'm going to keep the time and I am so ready! Ooh, he's ready! I hope you are at home. Here comes the first question. Six times five divided by three plus four times two Minus three is what? Start the clock! Oh, time's up, time's up, time's up, time's up! And I hope you've written the answer for the first sum because it's time for the second sum. And here it goes. Four plus six times five divide by two minus one. And start the clock! Clop the stop, clop the stop, clop the stop, clop, clop the stop, clop the stop, clop the stop. Well, thank God that this is actually a game about maths. Here comes the final question. Eight times eight minus four divided by three plus three is what? Start the clock. Game's over, game's over. Stop, stop. Game is over. That was intense. And it's time for us to reveal your answers. And we hope that everyone at home, you are ready with your answers as well. Team A, can you show us the answer for the first sum? 25. Ah, okay, 25. team B, what's your answer for the first sum? It's a blank page for the first sum. So, Charlie, please, can you work out the sum for us? Six times five divided by three plus four times two minus three comes to 25. Oh, yeah. yeah! Oh, wow! Team A got it correctly. Wow, don't worry Team B, you still have a chance to prove yourself, okay? For the second sum, can we see the answer, Team A? 24, and Team B, what's your answer? 24, 24. as well, oh. Mm. Wow, Charlie, we have the same answer. Let's see if it's a correct one. Yeah. 4 plus 
6 times 5 divided by 2 minus 1 comes to 24. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> yeah. We have same answers and they're correct answers. Wow, so let's see the third sum. Team B, don't you worry. We have one sum to go. Let's see Team A if you got this one correctly. 33 from Team A for the third sum and Team B, 23. Ooh, there's a difference of 10 mm -hmm. there. That's yeah. Charlie. Yeah. That's a very big difference. Oof, let's let's see. see if it counts. Sum number three. Eight times eight minus four divided by three plus three. It's 23. Yeah! yeah. Wow. yeah. Ooh, wow, congratulations, Team B. You got that one correctly. Wow, we have two points from Team A and two points from Team B. Uh -huh. That's a tie. And that brings us to the tiebreaker question. Charlie, please. The tiebreaker is very, very simple. Each team has just five seconds to answer one sum correctly. You must put up your hand. The team that puts up its hand first and answers correctly gets to take these books back to their school, courtesy of our friends, the Longhorn Publishers. Are the rules clear? Yes! Okay, so here is the tiebreaker question. Nine times four plus eight divided by 11 minus two. Start the clock. Stop, 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 stop. End of tiebreaker. <laughs> yes. Do we have an answer? Yes, Team A. 43. Are you sure? What about you, Team B? Two. Two. All right. It's a big difference of opinion. Let's solve the sum. Who's going to win this? There's only one way to find out. Nine times four plus eight divided by 11 minus two. Team A, it's two. Yeah! Congratulations, Team B, for winning this fabulous textbooks courtesy of our friends, the Longhorn Publishers. And don't you worry, Team A, you have helped Marara with his maths. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now, hey, um, camera one, how many did you get? Did you get three? Huh? Two? Who? I think I'm better. One? Oh, well, you'll get better with more practice. Don't forget to contact us. Just ask your parents to help you send a text with the word zone. Your name and address to... 5606. And you become an instant No Zone Club member. Do not touch your remote because we still have a half hour of fun and learning to go. by telling everyone at home what today's buzzwords are. North. West. East. South. Well, all these words have to do with direction. That's right, Marara. But now why don't we go visit Marara's favorite place? Yes, let's go out on Wild Zone. Welcome to the Wild Zone. Now, it's time for us to return to Lake Naivasha and see what is happening there. The old flower fields are flooded. This silt is heading for the lake. 
Almost overnight, the brown dry areas will turn green and a big, drying out eagle will come hunting. He's on the lookout for prey. A bit of pork might seem the target, but what he sees is invisible to people from the road. In fact, there are quite a few of them pecking about. And a marabou, that big vulture stalk, with a big beak for big business. Millions of winged termites have emerged with the rain, shed their wings and are now desperately burrowing to safety. Millions will die or get eaten. It takes a lot to satisfy the maraboos and eagles. But millions too will disperse to start new colonies until the rains come again. But when might that be? Whole communities depend on the weather pattern and that's been changing a lot lately. It will affect the lake nearby and that will affect everything around it, especially the horticulture. Talk about changes. A few years ago, this giraffe was wading across what looked like an inland sea. Today, most of that water has gone and the giraffe shares the green grazing with the Maasai goats which invaded this new, damp feeding ground. Welcome to a restaurant called Drifters. Hardly afloat, it got even more stranded later when the edge of Lake Naivasha disappeared over the horizon. Hotels like the Sopa Resort used to attract visitors by the proximity to the lake. Not anymore. Water is brought from the lake to the lush gardens, which in turn tempts a rather special visitor to the top of the garden. Bit of a shock if you're on the balcony upstairs, but there's one tree on his mind. This is all a bit disheartening for the gardeners. And something for security to keep an eye on. Giraffe alert! Beware of falling euphorbia. There's obviously a health and safety issue here when giraffes are as tame as the horses that the tourists ride. But tourists, like flowers, are a big money earner for Kenya. Giraffes are worth their weight in Kenyan shillings. Horticulture earned 32 billion shillings from export in 2009. Neither the giraffe, nor tourism, nor the flower business could survive without this stuff. For local people with no running water, and the Maasai with thirsty cattle through the dust, water is vital to their existence. Next week on The Wild Zone, we'll be exploring how the wildlife is faring on in Lake Naivasha. Hope to see you then. Wow, the wild is always so cool. Yes, and I never get lost in the wild. You know, lions have an amazing sense of direction. <laughs> amazing sense of direction? Aren't you the lion who got lost the other day? Ah, that was just bad directions. <laughs> if you want to learn more about what you've seen here today, then you should become a Nozone Club member. That's right. Now all you have to do is send us a text with the word zone plus your name and your address to 5606 and you will become an instant Nozone Club member. And remember, ask your parents to help you send a text. What do you think that means? It's time for hot numbers. Hello everyone! Hello, Hello teacher Pendo! Welcome to Hot Numbers. By now we should all be able to add, subtract, multiply and divide small numbers. Oh, teacher Pendo? Yes, Marara? I can do that too. Aha, very good. I'm always happy to hear that. But today we will look through addition and subtraction, but this time we will have more than three digit numbers. So 89 is a two digit number. 207 is a three digit number. 78,967 is a five digit number. What do you think? 345,678 
How many digits does this one have? Yes, why there are? A six digit number. Very good, well done. Now on the board here, I have two sums. So on our first sum, just like with smaller numbers, with addition, we start from the right hand side. Five plus two is seven. seven. Four plus two is six. Six, six plus three is nine. nine. Four plus four is eight. eight. 7 plus 5 is 12. 12. We write 2 here, then we carry the 1 here. Then 1 plus 5 gives us 6. So how will we read this number? Yes, Hilda? 628,967. Very good. Now if we look at the second sum, we see that 5 plus 2 is 7. Uh, 3 plus 5 is eight, four plus six is 10. So we write zero here and we carry the one here and then we add five plus one, which gives us six. Seven plus eight is 15. So we write five here and we carry the one here. Um, six plus the one we carried is seven. So seven plus seven gives us 14. How do we read this number? Someone tell me. Yes, Hilda? 1,456,087. Very good. Now we will move on to subtraction. Again, you all know how to subtract, but I'm now going to challenge you with this bigger number. Well, so, Teacher Pendo. Yes, Marara. The principles are the same with bigger digits. Mm -hmm. Just that you have to concentrate too hard. <laughs> That's right, Marara. Now, I have this sum on the board here. And this time, please note that it is subtraction. Always look at the operation sign before starting your workout. Okay. So, 0 minus 6 doesn't work. So what we will do is we will borrow 1 from 5, which gives us 10. So 10 minus 6 becomes 4. Remember, we borrowed 1, so we have 4 here. 4 minus 3 gives us 1. one. Interesting again, we have 4 minus 6, which doesn't apply. So what we need to do is borrow 1 from 3, which gives us 14. Now, 14 minus 6 is 8. And remember, we had borrowed one from here. So now we have 2 minus 2. Oh, I, I know that one. Yes, Marara. 2 minus 2 is 0. Very good. And we will subtract nothing from 6. So it remains as 6. And what is our answer? Yes, Hilda? 60,814. Very good. Now remember, sometimes you may have sums written in a line. Now to make your calculations easier, always write them out in a vertical manner, just like what we've done with these sums here. Now can anyone tell me why we learn mathematics? Yes, Wasonga? It is important to know how to count. Excellent. But why is it important to learn how to count? Oh, Teacher Pendo. Yes, Marara. I think it's because we are counting all the time. Like now, I can count how many we are in class. Good. Well done. Now, where else do we need to know how to count? Yes, Hilda? The shop. Yes, in the shops, we always need mathematics. We learn mathematics so that we can apply it to our everyday life. As I explain a problem, you need to tell me how to solve them. Now, if you're at home, why don't you get your papers and pen and join in? Now, Musa needed to buy two trucks for his business. He inquired from the sellers how much each truck was costing. One was going to cost 800,450 shillings. The second truck was going to cost him 2,975,680 shillings. How much was he going to pay in total? Now, how do we go about working out this sum? Yes, Maua? Add the cost of the two trucks mm -hmm. together, in, together in a vertical sum. Very good. Now, let's do that. So, one was going to cost 800,450. And the other one was going to cost him 
two million nine hundred and seventy five thousand six hundred and eighty shillings. So what we are going to do is add this because we're looking for the total cost. So zero plus zero gives us zero. What is eight plus five? Yes, Wasonga? Thirteen. Thirteen. So we write the three here and we carry one here. So this gives us five plus six, which is? Yes, why there are? Ten, but we carry the one. We add the one to, to the ten to get eleven. Mm -hmm. So we write the one here and we carry the one. So how do we go about this? Oh, teacher Pendo, yes, I know that one. Uh, five, but we should write six because we carried the one. Very good. Okay, what is zero plus seven? Yes, Moa? Seven. Very good. And what is nine plus eight? Yes, Hilda? Seventeen. Mm -hmm. We write seven and carry the one. So we write the seven here and we carry the one here. So two plus one gives us? Yes, Hilda? Three. Very good. And what is the total? Yes, Maua? Three million. 776,130. Well done. Now, Teacher Pendo. Yes, Marara. I always thought I needed a calculator for working big numbers. But now, I think I can do it with just pen and paper. Well, it's always good to hear that. Working with numbers that are more than three digits is really straightforward. All you need is a pen and paper. Well, unfortunately, that's all we've got time for today on Hot Numbers. But be sure to tune in next time as we look at multiplying and dividing numbers that are more than three digits. Now we are going to log into our database KZ and find out about another job. Keep watching because now it's time for Career Zone. Hello, can you tell us a little about yourself? My names are Margaret Kerubo, a couple of police. Currently attached to Rangata Division, current police station, performing traffic duties. And also I'm a mother of three. How did you find yourself in this line of work? Actually, when I was in school, I admired some of the police ladies. So I decided to go for an interview when it was advertised. I was selected and given a form to join at Kenya Police College. Please tell us what you do in a typical day. I woke up in the morning, I prepare myself, prepare my family, I enter in the office, book on duty, proceed to various assigned points where we control traffic and detect traffic offenses. What is the best aspect of your job? The best aspect of my job, I like it when I interact with all types of people, making friends, serving people to my satisfaction and making them happy. What are the main challenges of your job? One is a tedious job, breakage of marriages because of staying very far from your family and also interact with arrogant and dangerous motorists. In your opinion, what skills or characteristics does one need in this line of work? One has to be polite, tolerance, no temperamental, smart and literate. What advice would you give anyone interested in your line of work? Work hard in school, be tolerant and to be ready to meet with the challenges in the career. That was actually really entertaining. What did you think, Marara? Yeah, I enjoyed it too. You know, I want to do every job I see on the career zone. Well, don't decide yet, Marara, because there's still many more jobs to be profiled. That is true, but it's time for us to do something a little different. It's time for us to put our brains into gear and go into that section of the show where Marara the lion is too chicken to watch. It's time for Spell It. <laughs> 
Animal. Animal. Chapter. Building. Narrow. Building. Respect. 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 Deep. Vegetable. Work. 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 Welcome to Spell It. Maua Wasonga and Waizera, you are about to step out of the shadows into the spotlight to compete for this week's spelling champion. And the winner will walk away with this fabulous dictionary courtesy of our friends, the Longhorn Publishers. Each contestant has just 30 seconds to spell correctly as many words as possible. If you want to hear the word again, just say repeat and the word will be repeated for you. Now each word is worth one point. So the more words you spell correctly, the higher your chances of winning. Are the rules clear? Yes. Excellent. Okay, Maua, you are our first contestant. Please take your place at the spelling zone. Maua, your 30 seconds start now. North. Repeat. North. N-O-R-H. West. W E S T Compass C O M P A W S Straight S T R A I G H T Father F A Repeat Father F A R T H E R Upwards U P W A R D S Time is up. Oh wow. Well done, Maua. Well done, Come Maua. on back. Come on back to your place. Wasonga, you are our second contestant. Please take your place at the spelling zone. Wasonga, your 30 seconds start now. South. S O T H. Right. Repeat. Right. R I G H T. Cardinal. C A R D I N A L near N E A R ne nearer N E A R E R downwards D O W N W A R D S roundabout Time's up Ooh. Come back Wasonga well done Oh well done Wasonga Why Zara you are our last contestant take your place at the spelling zone why there? Your 30 seconds start now. East. E A S T. Left. L L E F T. Points. P O I P, P O I N T. Next. N E X T. Opposite. O O P P O S I T E. Direction. D R D I R E C C H C T I O N Junction J U N C T I O N Time's up. Ooh, your time well is up. Done, well there. done, well done. Well done. Wow. After that amazing round of spell it, I think we can reveal the results. It seems we have a tie for second place. But before I reveal the tie, Maua, you spelt the word North without an R. Wasonga, you spelt the word South without a U. Waidara, even though you spelt the word point correctly, Wanja asked for points. That being said, the tie for second place with five points each is between Wasonga and Maua. Which means today's No Zone Spelling Champion with a total of six points. Let's give a round of applause to Waidera. <laughs> Step forward. Congratulations. You are today's No Zone Spelling Champion. Here's your dictionary. Show everyone at home your dictionary right there. Let's give another round of applause. 
Stefan back. Congratulations, Waidera. Well, Wasonga and Maua, thank you so much for participating and getting all those words correctly. We have fabulous prizes for you, and we'll give them to you at the end of the show. That's right. Now, after that wonderful round of spellage, I think we all deserve a break. So, why don't we sit back and relax and enjoy another exciting adventure on Bus Stories. Give it back. It's mine. Oh, Take it. Hey, stop it. Can't you see he's tired of your games? Mm. Thanks, Raha. Hey, what's going on here? Nothing, teacher. We were just playing. Now, Raha, what's wrong? We were just having fun. You know we were going to give it back. Yeah, we were. Sure you are. <coughs> mm, eh. <coughs> Uh, apparently, there's been a problem with the engine, so you have to be a bit delayed. I'll fix it. Don't worry. Just be patient. I have a story this time, guys. Oh, please, no. Story, story. Story, come. Once upon a time, there was a bus that always broke down. <laughs> the children in this bus used to hate it when the bus broke down because it would take hours to fix it. They also hated it because on this bus, there was a big, bad bully. The bully was a big, round boy who used to beat all the children on the bus so that they could give him their lunch money. Why didn't they just carry packed lunch? I'm getting to that part. Yeah, Bumba, why don't you just let her finish? I want to hear the rest of the story. Thanks, Pex. Now, where was I? One day, all the children were on the bus when the dreaded sound of the engine reaching the stopping point could be heard and the whole bus was sad. They watched as teacher Mary and Chuma got off the bus and turned to see the big bully, who was called Chalim, crunching his knuckles. Before he could start to get the money, teacher Mary and Chuma came back and said the bus was fixed. However, as soon as the driver started the bus, the bus took off at a super speed and was out of control. Once the bus stopped, everyone got off while Chuma went to the engine to see what went wrong. The children are all getting off the bus because they were afraid that Charlie would get them. What they did not realize was that Charlie was following them off the bus. The children tiptoed off into the forest. The field was brilliant and they all began to play happily, except for Charlie, who was getting ready to collect lunch money. Suddenly, out of the blues, a large monster came about. The monster was large and purple and was followed by a trail of icky goo. It let out a large way and grabbed up Charlie and Raha. Goo sounds disgusting. Who cares about Goo? What about Raha and Charlie? Well... They should leave Charlie. He doesn't deserve rescuing. Yes, he does. Well, let me continue. Bumba, who was the first to see this, went invisible and climbed a tree near the monster and began tickling the monster's neck with a feather. Then Raha let out a piercing scream and the monster stunned and let Raha go, leaving the monster holding Charlie. The children all went back to the bus to find teacher Mary and the driver Chuma about to finish fixing the engine. Wow, you guys are so quiet for the first time. What's going on? Um, nothing, teacher. Are you sure? Yes, we are. Okay, let's get going before we get too late. This is fixed. Okay, and that is how we learn not to pick on people who are smaller than us. Specs, I'm sorry for what we did earlier. Yeah, we shouldn't have done that. It's okay, guys. I'm just happy I didn't need to use my goo. <laughs> oh, I really love that story. 
That's right, Marara. Being able to make good decisions is a very important life skill. Yeah, that's true. And I enjoyed the story as well. But sadly, that's all we had time for today. Come on, everyone. Let's say goodbye. Bye! Bye.